In this video, we are going to perform sentiment analysis using Google's Gemini and OpenAI's ChatGPT APIs in Python. And just so you know, both of these platforms have uh, APIs that are uh, sort of free to use. In fact, we have a separate video on how to fetch your uh, free Google Gemini API key from Google's Makersuit platform. Do check that out. And for ChatGPT API, OpenAI gives uh, $5 worth of free credits on new accounts. So you may use that up. Talking about sentiment analysis, I'm sure you would uh, agree that uh, it's one of the most interesting data science and AI problems that uh, we all like solving. In fact, on our channel Analytics with Vidya, we ran a three-part series on sentiment analysis where we discussed and implemented traditional machine learning approaches in part one. Embeddings for uh, feature extraction like uh, word 2 vec Glove and FastText in part two. And finally, we also implemented deep learning for sentiment classification in part three. All across these uh, three part uh, sentiment analysis series, we got classification accuracy of around 85 to 90%. Now in this video, we are going to implement a whole different way of uh, classifying sentiments and that is using the power of large language models. So here's what we are going to do. We'll be using the Amazon Alexa customer reviews data set for uh, sentiment classification. This data set has a binary classification labels, positive, which is label equal to one and negative, which is label equal to zero. In terms of hands-on, we'll first be doing uh, data pre-processing using Python. And finally, we are uh, going to generate sentiments on uh, the customer reviews using both Gemini Pro and ChatGPT API. In terms of uh, prompting, we are going to try out uh, zero short as well as few short prompting and observe model performance on these. Now let's get started with the hands-on. All right, now we are in our uh, Google Collab environment. Uh, I'm already connected to a regular runtime. We don't need a GPU for uh, this project. Uh, and by the way, I'll share a link to this particular notebook in the description part of this video for your uh, quick reference. So over here, first let's import our data set that I have uh, kept in this uh, project folder within my Google Drive, this one. And uh, just so you know, guys, uh, uh, this is project number five in our Gen AI hands-on series. Prior to that, we have uh, done uh, multiple of these projects like building a chatbot using BARD API, uh, doing hands-on with open source models like Falcon 7 billion, Dolly 3 billion. We also built a code explainer using the Palm API. And uh, recently, we have released uh, how to do hands-on uh, with Mixtral 8x7 billion model uh, within the free collab environment. So this is project number five that we are uh, discussing. And uh, link to the previous uh, video tutorial is something that you can get from this project tutorial documentation. Uh, we have provided a link to all of these here. All right. Now just to uh, reiterate this, uh, I have kept the data set for this particular project over here, which is this Amazon Alexa.tsv. Now we are going to import that into our collab environment. Uh, so for that, first we need to mount uh, the Google Drive uh, to collab and then we navigate to the directory where our sentiment analysis project is located and this LS over here is just uh, to double check if everything is in place as you can see we do see uh, our data set uh, marked over here so we are good to go now let's import the data set for this tutorial we are using a data set called Amazon Alexa.tsv we'll read it into a pandas data frame uh, and take a look at the first few rows let's do that as you can see, this data set contains information about Alexa reviews, and we are particularly interested in these uh, two columns, verified reviews and the feedback, which is a binary sentiment label uh, to these uh, customer reviews. So just to be specific and focused on uh, the data that is of interest to us, we create a new data frame called my data with these uh, relevant columns, and we rename them for clarity. And here are the first few rows from this data frame, uh, just to check that everything is on track and we are good. Next, let's look at the distribution of feedback labels, basically count of positive and uh, negative sentiments across the two labels, positive and negative. As we can see, our data is fairly imbalanced. Uh, to tackle this, we are uh, using downsampling or uh, undersampling as we call it. Uh, as we are not training a machine learning model here, rather using a language model for prediction, so we don't need tons of data for training. In fact, in zero-shot prompting, we literally don't need any data whatsoever for training. We solely rely on models' inherent knowledge for predictions. Hence, using uh, downsampling is okay in this particular case. 
So for balancing our data set over here, we uh, calculate the occurrences of uh, the two labels, positive and negative. And then from the majority label, we are uh, taking a sample uh, to match it to the minority class. And as you can see, now our data set is as balanced as it can get. Now as next step, it's crucial to prepare our data before uh, we move on to predictions. So in this uh, next section, we are focusing on data pre-processing, which is a critical step to ensure our uh, text data is in optimal shape for analysis. So first off, let's import the necessary library, which is this. So to do this, we define a function called uh, clean text uh, to clean our data. This function removes special characters, uh, single characters, HTML tags, convert text to lowercase, which is this particular uh, part of the code and eliminates extra white spaces too. Now let me just initialize this function. Next step is to call this uh, clean text function on our, uh, our verified reviews. So we start by extracting the reviews from our uh, uh, balanced uh, data frame into this list called uh, reviews. Next, we iterate through uh, each element from our reviews list and call the clean text function onto it. And finally, we ingest the clean reviews back to our uh, balanced data. Now let's have a look at it, how it looks like. And as you can see, we have uh, the clean reviews added to the uh, balanced data frame that we have. Now in this next step, we are splitting our data into 5% training set, which is a handful of reviews that we would uh, use for few short prompting later on and remaining 95% it would be the test set on which we are going to ask language model to predict sentiments and then use the results for gauging prediction accuracy. Let's run this as well. All right, now we have come to the exciting part where we are going to set up our uh, Gemini model API. In this part, you would need the Gemini API key. If you don't have it, uh, refer to this particular video to do so now. First thing first, let's uh, install the necessary package and uh, thereby import the required libraries over here. Next, we'll uh, define our utility function uh, to Markdown, which converts text to Markdown format. Let's initialize this code. At this point, let's secure our uh, Gemini API using our uh, API key. Uh, Gemini API key, I have uh, configured within my collab environment uh, with this name. Uh, called Google API key. I also have open API key and I've given access uh, of these keys to this particular notebook. So you may do that too. And thereafter, I'm calling these uh, keys in my code uh, using this user data dot get. Uh, moving on, you may also pull a list of available models on the Gemini API. So these are the models that we have. In our case, we'll be using the Gemini Pro uh, model for our sentiment classification task. So we are declaring that over here model is Gemini Pro. And now is the time to make an API call to generate text. In this uh, case, answering the age old question, what is the meaning of life? So as you can see, uh, we are able to generate uh, text from the Gemini model with the help of uh, our API. Now let's integrate the Gemini API with our sentiment analysis task. For this, we will first convert a sample of our uh, test set to JSON format. If you can recall, uh, we dumped 95% of our uh, uh, balanced data to test set. Now we are just picking some 20 records from there uh, and dumping that into this test set sample. Let's do that. Apart from that, we are also adding uh, a new column called uh, pred label. And within this uh, uh, column, uh, we'll be adding the uh, predictions generated by the language model later on. All right, next up, we convert our samples to JSON format uh, with this line of code. And this is the prompt that we have written where we are uh, telling the language model to act as an expert linguist and uh, help in classifying customer sentiments into positive, negative labels. We are also specifying uh, which is one and which is zero, like positive is label one, negative is label zero, so that the model doesn't uh, confuse itself. And finally, we are asking uh, the model to generate uh, predictions and uh, give back the final output uh, in the JSON code format, right? So let's initialize the prompt. This prompt has the uh, review samples that we are asking language model to generate predictions on in the JSON format. All right, finally, we feed our prompt to the Gemini model generate content method for uh, sentiment prediction. It might take a couple of minutes, so be patient with that. All right, we have uh, received the response from the model. And now is the time to clean up this uh, JSON data from the API response and dump it into a pandas data frame. 
and uh, this is the code to do that. So the, these are the clean reviews that we sent to the model and these are the predictions generated by the Gemini Pro model. Now as last step, let's ingest these uh, predicted labels to our uh, original test set sample and then we'll finally compute the accuracy. Here we go. So in this case, as uh, we can read from this confusion matrix, all 20 reviews are uh, correctly uh, classified into positive and negative labels. So it's a 100% accuracy that we are getting with Gemini Pro on a single API call. And there you have it. We have seamlessly integrated the Gemini API into our sentiment analysis workflow. If you are enjoying this tutorial, guys, do not forget to like this video and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you see more of our data tech content in your YouTube stream. So guys, we have generated sentiments on customer reviews using uh, Google Gemini API and it works like a charm. Now in this next step, we are going to learn another important aspect of generating sentiments from large language models. Given LLMs have prompt length constraints, there's a limit to how many reviews we can send in a single API call for predictions. And in case we have uh, sizable data to work with, we go for batch processing. Here we divide our data into small batches that are permissible to be sent in a single API call and hit the model API multiple times to process all the batches iteratively and thereafter collate the results. Let's see how we can do that in this part of the code. And just for the sake of variety, in this uh, next part, I'm using the OpenAI ChatGPT API. So let's dive in. So let's start by configuring the OpenAI API. I'm pulling the OpenAI API key from my collab environment using userdata.get, the way I showed you for uh, Gemini. And to test the API, uh, I have written this get completion function. It has two arguments, the prompt and the model, which I'm sort of uh, mentioning as default uh, GPT 3.5. Now let's uh, feed a prompt to the API. Let's check the response. And we are indeed getting uh, the response from the API, so it's working uh, fine. Now let's move on to the batching API calls for this ChatGPT API. For the sake of time, I am uh, taking a sample of our uh, test set again. Uh, so this is our test set. It has around 488 records and I'm picking uh, a handful, which is 100 over here, right? Again, I'm adding uh, a blank column called bread label, which I'll be using later on for dumping the model predictions back here. And uh, then we set up batches equal to 50 and divide our data across these batches. So because we have 100 samples, so we'll be having two batches of 50 each. And thereafter, we define uh, this get completion function, GPT completion function uh, with these arguments. It's very much similar to the function that we wrote above for Gemini. Within this function, we are passing the batch and uh, data from the batch, uh, which is like 50 samples are uh, converted to JSON data within the function and then we have also sort of drafted a prompt and this prompt uh, will have the JSON data ingested into it and finally we call the OpenAI model uh, feeding this particular prompt uh, to it and generating predictions. All right, let me initialize this function. Now we call this uh, completion function on our batches and dump model responses in this uh, list called responses. Let's run it. Again, it might take one or two minutes depending upon the data that you have. So be patient uh, in this particular step. All right, our predictions are generated now. As last step, we clean up the JSON data from the API response and dump it into our pandas frame, which we are calling DF total. Let's run it. As you can see, this is how the uh, data frame looks like. And finally, we are ingesting uh, the predicted labels back to our uh, original test set total, which had 100 records and now uh, testing for accuracy. As you can see, we are getting a healthy 91% still. So guys, how cool is that on a scale of one to 10? We didn't have to develop a machine learning model or a deep learning model, worry about uh, the text to numeric representations, embeddings, etc. All we did was to configure the language model API for ChatGPT and Google Gemini and generated predictions within a span of minutes. Do let me know what uh, you think about this in the comment section below. And remember, these are the results with zero short prompting. Can the model do any better if we show it a few examples from our data set with the help of a few short prompting maybe? Let us find out in this last section of our code.
So within this section for uh, batched API calls to ChatGPT API with few short, again, uh, this is the test set we have, 95% of the balanced data. Uh, we are picking 100 samples from it, just like uh, we did in the previous part, creating uh, two batches of 50. And then we are writing our GPT completion function. Now in this particular function, there is a small change that apart from uh, feeding the batches as argument, now we are also feeding a train sample. Right, so this train sample is basically some handful of uh, five, 10 uh, exemplars that we are picking from the training set that we uh, sort of created above, which was 5% of the total balanced data. Uh, and within this function, we are uh, 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 converting uh, the uh, batch data as well as the uh, sample data into JSON. And then uh, we are also sort of having our prompt over here, having uh, the reviews on which uh, uh, predictions are to be generated as well as the sample JSON data which is contributing to the few shots. And finally, we call the OpenAI model for predictions within this function. Now, let's initialize this function. All right. And finally, we are calling this uh, GPT completion function on our uh, batches iteratively. And uh, within this, as you can see from the train set, which was 5% of balanced data, we have picked up some random 10 uh, records as sample and then we are feeding that to uh, the function as an argument. Let's run this one. Now remember the only change we have done from the previous part to here is that we have uh, uh, employed a uh, few short learning for our uh, uh, model and uh, we should be getting better results with this particular approach. Let's see what we get. All right, uh, we are done with the generation part on uh, the label prediction. Now let's uh, clean up uh, the JSON response and dump it back to our uh, original data frame, which was this test set total. And again, let's compute the accuracy. So guys, here are the results with a few short prompting as well. We are getting somewhat similar accuracy to what we got with zero short. Do try it out on your end and uh, let me know about your experience. What kind of accuracy level did you get? Let's uh, discuss more on this in the comment section of this video. So guys, that's all we had for you in today's video. If you have any question or facing any difficulty with this code, do let me know in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. If you want to see more such videos, do subscribe to our channel. If you want us to pick uh, more video on certain topics that you would want to see, do share uh, them in the comment section as suggestions and we'll pick them up for you. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.